Welcome back, Texas Customs and 4x4. We got our 1988 FJ62 Toyota Land Cruiser. If you saw my previous video, you saw that the oil pressure gauge was converted to a mechanical gauge. Uh, this is a common problem where the oil pressure gauge stops working or it reads low on the dash, and then people get worried. They put in a mechanical gauge. So we're gonna fix that today. We have all the parts we need. Uh, but I'm going to walk you through all the troubleshooting that is required to get this thing back and operational. Let's get into it. Now, you saw in my previous video where we had the mechanical gauge. We've removed that. So there's our sender. It's got two spades on the top. And here's our wire. It's just one single wire, yellow with a black stripe. We've got our multimeter uh, hooked up. We've got it on the ohm range. And it's in the auto ranging uh, feature. Uh, if you don't have uh, auto ranging, just set it to resistance, uh, a couple hundred ohms. It's probably only going to be uh, less than a hundred. Got our black cable hooked up to the ground post of the battery, and our red uh, test lead here is hooked up to our sender. Uh, be careful when you uh, hook this up to the sender. There's two posts on the sender. There's a center post. That's the one we want. And then there's one on the outside that just grounds. Uh, I'll give you a better look here. You can see there's the outside one that grounds over here and then the center one. So we're gonna put up to the center one. And right now uh, with the engine off, uh, you can see uh, it's an open circuit. So it's overload. So there's no, uh, there's no continuity there. And then we're going to go ahead and fire up the, uh, the cruiser here and see what resistance level uh, that thing reads. All right, now let's take a look at our gauge. Now we can see as the pressure bleeds down, we're getting 44 ohms, and then eventually it'll probably bleed down all the way uh, and go to zero. So let's see. There it is. So our sender's working. Now let's troubleshoot the wiring. We're troubleshooting here, I hooked up the wire with my little red test lead and then down in the sender you can see it's still hooked up to the sender so what is this doing this is simulating that it's wired up as it should be uh, we're only adding the resistance of this little wire which isn't much and I want to show you guys what it's doing on the dash so here we have our oil pressure see it did raise up a little bit on the gauge but not all the way okay okay that's as far as trust me I've, I've been out here before that's as high as it goes and then as it uh, bleeds down it goes back down okay now I have the this sender lead hooked up directly to ground caution caution okay the way the gauge works it's based on a heating element so a little bit of current flows through some small resistive wire that heats up a metallic strip that makes the gate the needle move if you do it if you do this test you need to be very very careful and ensure that you don't leave it on too long okay because it will overheat bend the needle and damage it or move it off the uh, off the peg there now, a lot of times what happens is the, uh, the sender uh, breaks and this thing uh, allows too much current to go through. 
and uh, uh, and then it, it, it can damage the needle or it bends the range in which the needle moves off the scale okay so now we have it hooked up we should be able to turn the key to the run position and see what the needle does okay let's let's try that now uh, we have the uh, the jumper lead connected directly uh, to ground and let's see what happens okay it is moving further up okay so we know our wiring is intact so that's what that test tells us that the wiring to the lead is intact so the next step that we're going to do is we're going to remove this uh, this gauge bezel and take a look at the gauge back here okay in order to remove the gauge bezel up here on these uh, cruisers it's real easy it's all Phillips head screws there's one here there's one here there's some underneath here one there one there up here up there and then underneath right up here and right up here are two more Phillips head screws okay down here so we're going to remove those screws this whole panel will come off and we'll be able to uh, disconnect and remove this uh, combination gauge here okay I forgot to mention uh, we have to remove this bottom bezel uh, first okay in order to get the uh, the top bezel off so in order to do that it's three screws one two three four and five you pull that off there's a little uh, thing this thing will, will slide out just like that you don't need to disconnect it but it just helps release this bottom of this uh, plastic piece here okay now once that's released <clears throat> we get all our screws out then we can kind of tilt this forward and if it doesn't already, you need to disconnect your speedometer cable. There's a little bit of uh, slack here, but you just pinch it. Okay, I'll show you a better picture once I pull this out. All right. It also helps to tilt the steering wheel as far down as it will go. Okay, so that's tilted down. And now you can rotate this forward, okay? and kind of see what you're doing. Now the easiest way is to just disconnect all these electrical connectors, pull this whole thing out onto your workbench and uh, and then go from there. Uh, the alternate method is just gonna be disconnect the, uh, the combo gauge itself and uh, right here and then unscrew it and then you can just pull this gauge out and work on that. So that's what we're gonna do. So we'll be right back. We've removed our gauge here it's three Phillips head screws. Pinch your little connector, pull that out, and now your combo gauge is removed. All right, now we're gonna take this into the workbench and we're gonna test uh, the gauge element. And you can already see uh, that if I turn mine like this, the needle's moving, so I'm, in fact, I'm not pretty sure. In fact, I know this gauge element is broken. We're here on the workbench uh, with our gauge. We're gonna take it apart. We're going to need a 7 millimeter uh, socket. You could use the pliers if you really needed to, but a 7 millimeter socket, a really small pair of uh, fine needle nose pliers. And we already know that uh, the gauge is bad, so I ordered a uh, used one from uh, cruiserparts.net, I believe. All right, we ordered our replacement gauge from Cruiser Parts LLC. Uh, they have a good selection of used uh, Land Cruiser parts. Let's pull the old one out and uh, and then we'll compare. All right, so if the old one, take our seven millimeter wrench. It's right over here. Undo these two screws. We're also going to need to remove these three Phillips head screws on the bezel. Our Phillips. Loosen those up. Set those aside. All right, and we're going to unscrew our old pressure gauge here. Good. 
pull our old gauge out. So you can see with our old gauge, we have uh, the resistive wire in here that goes around this metal strip. And as that resistive wire moves, you can see it forces the gauge needle to rotate there. So I'm going to turn it a little bit like this so you can see as it moves. Now, why is our gauge moving around by just the weight? Well, you can hardly tell. Let me get a pointer. So if you see this area right here, this needle, this little metallic strip here is actually uh, fractured and broken. So, you know, and the, why is it that way? Because I was messing with it and I broke it. So don't do that, okay? The only thing holding it together is the wire. Okay, now, if you have a problem with yours or you buy a replacement like this, uh, mine came and the needle was way down here below. So when it heats up, it's gonna, it's gonna raise up and a lot of people complain because it only, it only reaches this far. It only reach like the bottom line so they think they have a little oil pressure. When they don't, it's just the gauge itself. So what you can do is you take your pliers, the little needle nose pliers, and very, very gently, okay? Now, there's two sides to this metal strip, okay? There's the side that doesn't have any uh, uh, wrapping on it and the side that has the wrapping. The side with the wrapping is extremely fragile and probably brittle from years of being heated and cooled, heated and cooled. The other side is a little more durable but still fragile. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna reach in here with your pliers and you're gonna, you're gonna bend it, okay, like this. Okay, so that you start out with the needle a little closer to the low mark. Um, you know, just use caution uh, when you're working on this thing. You're just trying to tune the needle a little bit and then as it heats up, it will, it will move the needle, okay? So I like where I have it now. I just need to be snug enough to make the electrical connection. It's not gonna vibrate loose. You don't need to wrench over on it. Okay, you just want a firm electrical connection. That's it. reassembled and we're ready to put it back in the truck okay we're back we've installed our screws uh, three screws we need to hook up our electrical plug so we'll plug that in okay and now when we reinstall this uh, this dash uh, we got to hook up the speed out cable okay so if you need some extra room you can pull some out <coughs> And you can see here, it just you just squeeze this to remove it, and then when you push it on, it should just snap on. Okay, I've removed this and put it back in several times, and it's all worked fine. And then you can see over here, it's just got this little groove, so when you put it in, it should snap right on. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do that. We'll put the get, uh, dash back in, just in place, before we put the screws in, and let's test it out and see how we did. Everything's connected, the speedo's connected, and the gauge sender and the wiring is connected. So now we should be able to Alright, we got good oil pressure. Oil pressure sender gauge is repaired. 